hello, I am Martin Fenska and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Tea to the Shattering. So as I said last time, we'll have one more like extra episode, just a short one, and it will be all about testing rituals, there won't be any gameplay at all. It's really just to test the rituals, if they are worth it or not. And, um, well, I did some preparations, because I want to test like the maximum s strength of rituals that we can get, or maximum strength, like, I wanted to buff up the, the ritual skill as much as possible to test how much is the maximum that we can get out of rituals when we max everything out. And then we'll test, like, what is uh, the average strength that the normal group will be able to get at the stage of the game where it's still relevant. <clears throat> So first of all, let's check the the strength of the rituals that I was able to get to. Uh, so to get the skill to the maximum amount, I first wanted to try characters that have the maximum base strength. Then I gave them the best uh, gathering tools that buff uh, rituals. So I used all my living roots to craft a living gathering tools that give plus nine rituals. And um, on top of that, I built a witch hut. I used, actually you can't see it here. I think maybe if I click, oh, you can see it here. I, lost, uh, I used more life root. It, it was like 60 plus life root and 35 void sparklers to get the maximum out of the witch hut. So you can see this is something normal group nor normal village will never have at the stage of the game where it's still relevant, where you might be interested in the rituals. But I wanted to get the maximum, so here we go. This is plus 15 rituals from the Witch Hunt. Uh, when we check the rituals, that means I was able to also get plus one ritual slot. So we have now uh, four slots for rituals, and we have people who have, let's say, average 400 ritual skill, or not skill, like 400 ritual points, or I don't know how we want to call it. But we can put together 1,643 in one turn. That is actually pretty impressive, uh, but I will tell you right now, it's a lot more than you can realistically get uh, at the stage of the game when you want to do these rituals, when these rituals will matter. So, let's see uh, what uh, or which rituals I will test. When we check the research tree, I didn't go for everything because some rituals are very similar. Uh, I don't think we have to like go for every single one. Also, I didn't want to just play like 300 turns, just keep hitting enter to, uh, uh, to like unlock all of them. So one, I want to test the physical blessing. So it gives us low level physical blessings for two turns. It's uh, the same thing as these two, just different, our blessing for a different stat, right? Uh, so I want to see if this somehow stacks up or if it just increases the duration or how it works when we perform more than one blessing ritual per turn. Well, if we get some benefit from that, that's one thing. Then, I want to test one summon ritual, there are just some more summon rituals, but the same thing basically, just summoning uh, stronger stronger minions. I want to know if we can summon multiple uh, like minions per turn, and uh, well, how, it, how does it work when we can do more than one ritual per turn basically. Then, uh, this one is not relevant because it sets this, the, the stat to 40, so there's no point in stacking it up. Uh, higher education, that's one we are interested in. Uh, this is basically how much we can get from this ritual per turn if it's possible to use this as basically a power leveling for a child later in the game. So we will test this one and then we have armor of knowledge which gives plus four physical shielding. That's one thing I don't like, it's just physical shielding. If it was at least like all types of shielding but this is just physical shielding for everyone in the group for five turns so this is like the best uh i think scaling potential the rituals that i skipped we already talked about these this one just summons a low level pad so we would just get more pads uh don't think we are really interested in that uh summon boat who cares about boats uh earth vision this one I was thinking about going for if we can get like vision across the whole map, which would be 
interesting. I think it would work if we could perform it like enough times in the three turns. Uh, then we could get. Well, what would it be? When I think about it, about our skill, let's say it has like 400 points required per ritual, so it'll be four rituals per turn. Uh, so I'll be able to stack up like 12 rituals, so it'll be plus 24 rank. So let's see, we'd have probably vision over most of one island. But do you care about that? I don't think so. Why would you do that just because for for like the fun, fun of it that it's... You can do it, but you don't have any, don't get any like relevant effect. So no point in testing this. Uh, we check these, and then we have. I was thinking about these two. This one gives crafting that stacks up uh, for five turns, but who cares really? It might be worth it if you like go to super late game and you want to make your gear out of tier 5 materials and everything superior then you might be interested in stacking up crafting to absolutely ridiculous like numbers and there, this ritual would probably do it because it lasts for five turns so you'll be able to get quite a few but does it matter like that late in the game if you want to do something like this you can just craft things over and over again. At that point, you probably can just afford it to reload the game. You know, even if you don't like doing it, if you want to get superior items out of everything in the late game where everything is already decided and you are doing it just because you want to do it, you may as well save yourself the trouble and reload until you get what you want. So this ritual, again, is really not relevant. I don't think it's worth testing. This one... Why would you, your expedition do this? The problem is that expeditions won't ever get like enough ritual strength to stack it up and instead of like wasting time and resources on rituals just get the boat and uh, sail home if you have like if you are carrying too much or throw away or the low tier materials you don't have to do this this again is a ritual that doesn't really has to have to be in the game it doesn't mean anything so <clears throat> That's why I skipped it as well. It's by uh, just my opinion. If you like see a potential in these two, just test it for yourself. I just don't think these are worth it. And if they were not here for me, it wouldn't really change anything. Okay, so that's um, the rituals that we are gonna test. <clears throat> Some of them I will just test in the village. There is no point in going outside. I'll just show you, show you the difference in how many we can perform in the village per turn and how many we can do outside of the village per turn. Uh, so we will start with the first one, with the physical blessing. <clears throat> so it costs 300 points to do one. We have 1600, so we can do five, uh, five per turn in the village with our best ritual people. Uh, so, upon completion, grants a low level physical blessing to all group members, which lasts two turns. So, we can just end the turn and we'll see what happens. And I think we just did it once because when you do a ritual multiple times, you can see similar when you get multiple research points, it's plus two. When you perform, uh, or did I? Oh, actually, wait, I made a mistake. Never mind. My, my bad. I didn't. Uh, set it up properly uh what do we want once again what did i use i think it was mithril and then i used silver i think i have to change this number i apologize for that let's just set it for infinite number and uh, i'm gonna do it again yeah that was my mistake so let's set, let's check the the blessing it's just one turn blessing, 115% health, and it gives one extra movement point. Okay, for the one movement point, if you can do this ritual in one turn for your uh, for your expedition, that might be worth it just to speed things up a little bit instead of throwing away extra stuff. You do this ritual, move a tiny bit faster. If you want to super micromanage everything, fine. It's something, but is that extra movement point here and there? Where the the advancement point that you have to invest in the ritual? That is my problem with rituals. That advancement points are way too precious to waste them on something that basically has no relevant effect most of the time. 
Uh, but let's try again. Maybe if we get like multiple movement points, see plus five now, that does anything. Uh, yeah, I'll get, keep getting some level ups. Okay, so now we have to go. Well, we can just switch here. Okay, so it increases the duration. Now it's the physical blessing for five turns. Uh, so if we have like ridiculous ritual skill, we can give ourselves the extra movement points for longer. Yeah. Well, but again, not worth the advancement point. So there is possible that these two have different secondary effect that they increase like, I don't know, in this case it will be sanity and instead of movement they give you plus one to another skill. But again, plus one doesn't mean anything, so I think these rituals are just not worth it. This one, if you have nothing to do with your with your advancement points somehow, and you have problems with your expeditions moving too slow and one movement point would make a difference. I can't imagine that situation, but if somehow that happens, yeah, maybe. Uh, then we try, try to create the bog bs. Let's see how many we can pop in one uh, one turn. That's 350, which means we'll do what? Not even four, I think. We'll be able to do three in, in a turn. Uh, four, that would be. No, actually, we can do four. Uh, that's 1200, uh, 1400. Yeah, we can do four in a turn. Next. So there we go. Four. Did we get four? One, two, three, four, four. Okay, so it summons multiple. Why the hell did they take damage? Uh, for some reason, they are not at full health. Mm. But what is the use for them? Champ blockers early. But early, you don't really have the materials that you need for this ritual. I use the mythical leather. What else is there? Well, maybe normal leather if you have enough. Hmm. Let me check the ritual itself to get to it. You need one point. If you are really struggling, I can imagine if you started, for example, just with children somehow have the materials for the ritual which you won't have i don't know early you won't have the ritual uh, won't have the 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 materials for the ritual and later the bs is just weak but you wanted to see how it works you can get more than one per turn if you find the use for them go for it but again i don't see the use if I didn't have to use the advancement point, maybe here and there I would get one to maybe, excuse me, speed up some gathering, perhaps. Let me check. Uh, gathering. Gathering, gathering, gathering. Where are they? Yeah, it's four extra gatherers that we can just fill this slot. So. What are we using? Silver and the leather, I think? Uh, no, bones. So if you have a leather and bones next to your village, you can basically have the summoned BS gather the materials so that you can keep spamming the ritual and get like infinite amount of workers. When they start dying, it's gonna need some, some micromanagement, but with this, you can technically fill all the possible slots for all the tasks in the village. If you want to do that, if you need to do that, maybe. Can they do rituals themselves? They can. Can they just... 
wait, 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 wait. Is it possible to create like a infinite loop when the, the BS would, would be summoning more BS? And it would be enough. So. Uh, they probably wouldn't have enough. Uh, can they get um, gathering tools? I think they can. Where are they? No, they can't. Never mind. Well, there is some potential for some, some shenanigans that... Yeah, are probably completely irrelevant for the normal gameplay. It might be, like, interesting to try just to see what happens. But again, I don't think this is that this ritual has any like use in the game when you are playing it in the normal way. So that's another one out of the way. Then we have we did these two. Armor of knowledge. I think that one has the highest potential for me. So with 300 points you can do this five times per turn. We will check, let's see, we'll check here. It's 37.7 shielding. Everyone will get the same amount, so. I'll just get rid of these guys. Close. Five times, as expected. And we got to 41.7. So from five rich, what the hell? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't stack. Well, there goes the potential of the ritual. From 37.7, .7, we got to 41.7. So that's plus four shielding. And I guess it got extra duration from the extra rituals. Hmm. So this is... Just the complete waste. Why would you need plus four physical shielding? Like, th the number is so pitiful that makes no sense. I thought that the number was so low because it could stack. Then, yeah, if you really invest into the ritual, you could, like, get so much shielding that it would maybe at some point allow you to do, like, Challenges you otherwise wouldn't be able to do this way. It's a complete waste of time So another one out of the way and this one is, is it's a huge disappointment. This is the ritual just shouldn't be here. Just ah. And now high education is another one that Looked like it may have potential before I researched it and found out that it that you need 600 points to perform the ritual once so when we read the description, upon completion grants three experience points equally divided among members of the group. So the bigger the group, the less relevant this is. So ideal use here would be four people, or actually uh, probably three people because fourth person doesn't make a difference here. We won't be able to do it like for the third time with the fourth person, right? We will always be able to do it twice. One child, do we have a child? Or, or a person that you want to power level. And then uh, you send everyone out of the village. Because you want to do this ritual in the village for the extra strength of the rituals. If I go outside of the village, I won't be able to get it twice. So we would have four people. I probably won't even like do this because it's too much like micromanagement, moving people out and in. Uh, but when you think about it, we'll be three we three people performing the ritual and the fourth person we want to power level. Unless the person that we are power leveling is one of these three. In that case, we, we would get a little bit more experience out of this. Mm, so with four people, we'll be sharing, what? Uh, three extra experience. So we will, we'll be getting six experience with this per turn. And we'll be sharing that between four people, so it's 1.5 experience extra per day. That's nice. But you have to realize that you won't have this ritual strength until you get to the end game. Where you don't care about 1.5 experience points, where you just can't grab the person you want to power level. 
especially during the winter, go out and kill level 10 challenges, that's gonna be like 25, 20 times faster than, than just trying to do ritual. So... It's, again, a complete waste of time. And now I'll show you why it is, like, a complete waste of time. Or why it's, why it's not uh, relevant early in the game. Um, I will leave... Where is it? Mm. You'll never have these tools early. So we can just get rid of them. Let's try to simulate the early game a little bit. So, you'll never have tools like this. We may have a tool that gives like plus one ritual, plus two ritual maybe. But I will also have lower level characters. So, uh, I'll like compensate for the high level by, level by not having any tools at all. Um, but I'll still take characters who have the highest natural ritual skill. And also we won't have the plus 15 ritual from the, like, the best witch hunt. So when we create an expedition, uh, that was a witch, that was the, the goblin, I think, and the ghost were our best, best people for rituals. And I think the last one is the warrior because he has the, uh, the, uh, other ring. But again, that's something you won't have. And outside of the village, we'll have only three slots uh, for available for a ritual. Let's give them a little bit of food, just in case we have to end the turn. But I don't think we'll have to do that. And you see the difference in the in the uh, in how many rituals we can actually perform outside of the village. You'll realize how, how bad it is. Okay, here's the expedition, move out, set up a camp, and let's check the rituals now. So they still have a decent skill, how the hell is that possible? Do we, are we getting any extra effects? Something, anything. Uh, rituals, rituals, rituals. 31. How is that 31? Increase rituals plus 15. We are still too close to the village. We have to wait a turn before this the, the, the effect of the uh, of the wedge hut disappears. Okay. Next. And now I think the numbers should be properly changed. There we go. So, when we check the Ritual strength, so we are getting extra from wisdom, mysticism, destiny, good morale. Okay, so this is more or less what you can expect, f like in average, early in the game or early in the game. And I think this, the the numbers are still pretty, uh, pretty high, because you won't have three classes that are so good at rituals. But even if you are really, really lucky and have something like this. And we take, let's see this, uh, whatever, just grab something. Uh, come on, what's the secondary one? 600 points, the, the number is still the same. We can put together three, 480. So we need more than a turn to get three extra experience. So in basically in two turns, we get one experience point. Waste of time. When we check the other rituals, we, are, we can actually see that in the village, the strength. Uh, once again, how many, how much, wait, 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 this is what I want. Three, 480, 480 points. That's what we have per turn outside of the village. Uh, 480 rituals, come on. I think we sh still should have them here. For 48, uh, this ritual we can completely skip because it doesn't matter how many we perform, we just get plus 4, so this is garbage. Then, for from 480 we'll be able to get 1 BS. So, 
maybe, just maybe, if you are really in trouble and need to do a fight and you are just missing like a sacrificial person, in that case, that BS may have or may give you what you need. And the physical blessing, you can do one, but again, it doesn't scale. It just increases the duration with more rituals. So you get one movement point. And, well, now you know all there is to know about rituals. So... It's up to everyone to, like, think about the numbers that I just went through. And, um, like, decide for yourself, is this worth the advancement point investment? When there are all the materials you could go for. When you have all the items you could go for. When you have all the buildings you can go for. When you have one point and you don't really know what to do with it. There is always a building that will be better than this. You also have recipes. Like... I already said that the first time I, I read all the rituals. And here for me, I just confirmed it. The rituals feel like something they added to the game just because they promised it. No one tested it. No one was even thinking about how strong and how worth, like, in uh, worth re re researching they really are. They just added them to the game to, to be there. They have to be remade from the scratch. They are super bad. I know that I'm, like, really harsh here, but come on. They're, they are so bad. They are completely useless. You never want to do them. There's always better use for advancement points. So, well, at least that is my point of view on the rituals. If you feel differently about it, well, let me know in comments why, where you see the potential. Uh, I'll definitely, like, let you convince me that if, there, if I see, like, some potential that I don't see right now, if you can show me the potential that I don't see right now, I'll gladly change my opinion. But I really don't think there is anything that might be useful okay so there we go that's the the last episode for uh for this series and on this like on this world uh next time well i'll take a break from there for a while now uh, i'll have to think what the next se series could be and uh, there are some other games i would like to play for a while so i can't say when the next uh, series uh, will come but there are some achievements that i would like to do so there should be more thea 2 series and well um as i already said last time i hope that you like the series i also hope that you liked this episode that i promised i hope it like wasn't too um too, too well it was pretty pretty negative so i can't say i hope it wasn't too negative it was just me complaining about how useless one part of the game is but um well you you wanted me to test things and i give you like my honest opinion what i think about this this part of the game that i was testing so here you go and uh, yeah i hope that you're gonna join me next time again until then have a good time bye bye